the icy waters of the North Atlantic, there lives an animal that has adapted to major changes in its environment. Adept at hunting fast, elusive prey, it is one of Europe's largest predators. The Grey Seal. The name conjures up images of appealing pups or amusing antics. And yet, there is another side to these creatures. They have always been targeted by formidable predators. And recently, members of their own species have turned traitor. Nowadays, they can be found swimming up rivers or hunting porpoises. To understand their changing behavior, we must follow in their wake and learn more about their lives in the changing seas. The shores of the North Atlantic are home to colonies of grey seals. From Canada to Sweden, via Great Britain, their preference is for temperate, stormy seas. Since seal hunting was banned at the end of the 1970s, the population has grown around 10% each year. But in the last few years, their numbers have leveled out. Today, scientists are just beginning to understand why. Thanks to improved annual surveys, and advances in animal tagging. Though their coastal activities were well documented, scientists can now uncover their movements at sea, their offshore hunting grounds, and their unexpected prey. It is September, and this young male is in search of a new place to live. On one of the many islands scattered around Great Britain that are home to 40% of the world's grey seal population, and 95% of Britons. Among them is the Isle of May, off the east coast of Scotland. The young male takes his chances where he can. But this island is already occupied by a 600-pound male seal that is keen to keep intruders off its property. against a heavyweight of this size and beats a retreat. Scientists previously believed that seals were philopatric. In other words, they returned to their birthplace to reproduce. But tagged or ringed seals have shown that that is not always the case. They have discovered that a young male is able to swim more than 600 miles in his search for a new territory. The young male is looking for the ideal location, an isolated island that is never completely underwater. Other seals have had the same idea, and the current occupant makes his feelings perfectly clear. To find his place in society, he must confront all the reigning male seals.
can't take the heat. We must step down. After several weeks of wandering, the young warrior finally arrives at the Orkney Islands in the north of Scotland. The high cliffs of the island of Westray seem completely inaccessible. Since the beginning of his odyssey, he has swum up the entire east coast of Great Britain, covering a distance equivalent to a marathon a day. Finally arriving at Faray, with its seemingly deserted shore. But first appearances are deceptive. He will have to fight again, but this rival is only six feet long and weighs a mere 330 pounds. the fight, but at a price. With the breeding season approaching, he must defend his territory with no time to feed. A week after his triumphant victory, he is rewarded with the arrival of female seals that he will protect from intruders. They are smaller, thinner, paler, and prettier. Now the dominant male, with a harem of seven shapely beauties. For the next six weeks, he needs to keep a close eye on them. To make sure no other males threaten his territory or his harem, he has to continually keep them at bay. Over short distances on land, a seal can move faster than a man running. age of 10 until they die around 15 years later. Male gray seals will have to fight around 20 times each autumn. Though rarely fatal, these combats take their toll. As for the females, they have arrived bearing gifts. Impregnated 11 months previously, they have returned to give birth. Grey seals are the largest wild animals to reproduce on land in Great Britain. Curiously, each year, 10 females are born for every seven males. These half-brothers and sisters are born just a few days apart. Despite their appealing looks, seal pups fail to arouse any paternal instinct in the male who has no involvement in their upbringing. Females only take care of the pups for 18 days, the length of the short feeding period. During this time, the young consume milk that is more than 50% fat. Drinking 10 pints of milk a day, they quickly pile on the pounds. As the babies gain weight, their super slimmer mothers lose 13 pounds a day and 40% of their body weight during the nursing period. Throughout the month of November, the coast experiences a grey seal baby boom. On the island of Fare, around 12,000 grey seals pile onto the beach each autumn. It's the second largest colony in Great Britain. Since 2008, the island's population has increased by a mere 4% each year. 
a drop of two-thirds compared to the 1980s. Yet the birth rate remains high. Over their lifetime, females give birth to a dozen or so young, but when the pups are left on their own, they suffer high mortality. After two weeks sheltering from storms in the mud, some females invite their young for a refreshing dip. Lured by their mother's milk, the budding swimmers get their first taste of the bracing water. It's a highly successful teaching method. Some even persuade their young to swim by forcing their heads under water. With little insulation, the youngsters start with short foils. Then venture out on their own for longer periods. Unaware of the danger, a new danger, an adult male. It's up to the mothers to keep him at bay. youngsters together, the females manage to curb the male's advances. Despite their size difference, the females control the breeding timetable on the island. The females don't eat during the nursing period, and after 18 days they no longer produce enough milk. It's time to wean the pups. Their independence is manifested through molting, bit by bit, their snowy white fur is replaced. Anything goes when it comes to fur removal. Some females head to the ocean to feed. The youngsters will probably never see them again. They are now alone, left to their own devices in the middle of winter, orphans in the storm. Half of them will not survive this brutal change. And recently, they have been faced with an enemy from within their own ranks. A male cannibal. It's an unfair fight. The large male uses all his weight to restrain his prey. Nearby, 
the seal's mother has heard its cries. She distracts the cannibal. And, miraculously, the young seal escapes with minor wounds. But the male is a serial killer. He looks out for mothers leaving to take advantage of their isolated youngsters. This time, nothing can distract him. This behavior has been observed in several British islands over the last 20 years or so. Each cannibal seal kills around a dozen pups per year. Surprisingly, they take only a strip of fat before abandoning their victims. It is thought that this cannibalism is motivated by sexual frustration rather than hunger. Certainly their strategy looks a lot like that practiced by young males. Their target? Young females attempting to return to the island. Just like the cannibals, males use their physical prowess to immobilize their victims in shallow water. by the neck, she cannot escape. The male could easily kill his partner, but he has other plans, reproducing to ensure his genes are passed on. These young seals are known as peripheral males. It is estimated that they are 10 times less likely to reproduce as the dominant males. But with many of them around, they often succeed. December marks the end of the mating season. All the females have left the island. Only a few solitary males linger. The last remaining orphans choose this moment to leave, to face the stormy seas and the unknown. The grey seal's reproductive calendar has always seemed contradictory. The pups are abandoned in the middle of winter in extreme weather conditions. mercy of males with an appetite for seal meat. The young need to escape without being seen by the cannibal. Some sneak out using hidden underwater passages.
Luckily, the fault lines lead to the deep sea. Only one young seal remains. But it's hard to tell what the seal has in mind. If his aim was to kill, his plans have been foiled. He can't control the pup in deep water. The youngster has escaped into the stormy sea. Its future will be forged in the wild water. It will need to survive amongst these liquid mountains where fish are rare. During the first few months at sea, the seal's fat reserves start to diminish in the icy water. Like this young female, though she's never been taught to hunt, her instinct quickly takes over. Though seaweed, the salad of the seas, will not keep her going for long. But she can rely on her fat reserves to survive until spring, if she saves her energy. Since cold water burns fat more quickly than the air, young seals pass some time on land to conserve energy. On average, they spend a day on land for every four days at sea. They learn to use their senses by instinct. Their eyesight works well in low light, whether above or below water, allowing them to detect prowling males. Their sense of smell is so acute that they can distinguish each specific seal by odor alone. Even out of water, the seal has a heightened awareness of its environment. Their whiskers are 10 times more sensitive than a cat's. Even in total darkness, they can sense vibrations created by moving bodies. These vibrations are not those of a marauding male. This tub of lard takes advantage of some cold water therapy. While he sleeps, he regulates his temperature by keeping his body in icy water. The young seal can easily slip past while he's not paying attention. And it looks like the coast is clear. It's the ideal moment to head to sea. But strange noises are getting closer all the time.
coming from all directions and mixed with clicking noises. allow the youngest to practice knocking out the seals. Killer whales, or orcas, have always hunted seals. North Atlantic killer whales also eat fish, but since fish stocks are falling, they concentrate on seals, and increasingly, they can be seen close to the coast. So all seals, both young and old, must learn to live with these dark menaces. seal that escaped knows how to tell where the orcas are from a distance. Even while asleep, by inflating his lungs, the seal floats in the water and sleeps with one eye open during its travels. Its whiskers detect any unusual vibrations at the surface or underwater. Gray seal's hearing is even more acute in water than in air so they can identify the vocalizations of their mortal enemy. The mere sight of a dorsal fin terrorizes all the seals, and for good reason, under the six-foot black blade is a nine-ton predator. Killer whales hunt in packs and can reach speeds of over 40 miles an hour. The seals have no chance. Their only solution is to huddle together on a makeshift shelter. The killer whales cannot risk beaching on the barnacle-covered rocks or they would shred their skin. Instead, they try to muddy the waters. The females and the young stay below the surface, changing positions, while the male intimidates the seals by making his presence felt. The seals don't budge. Killer whales leave to surprise less careful seals elsewhere.
killer whales appear only at the end of spring and during the summer in Scotland. When the seals are fat and well fed. At the end of spring, all the seals have left the nursery in Faray. The increased sunlight in these northern latitudes stimulates an explosion of phytoplankton in the water. This microscopic seaweed turns the surface of the water green and attracts other animals. Fish and shellfish that provide food for predators. In the three years after leaving their birthplace, the young seals hunt these prey following the currents. With no place to call home, they disperse. One seal left Faray and headed to the north of Scotland, passing through the Pentland Firth with its remarkable red sandstone sea stacks. Strange geological formations eroded by the wind and the sea. Then it turned back and headed south down the length of the west coast of Scotland. Without hunting lessons, the seal relies on its instinct and watches other seals and marine animals in the hope of sharing their feast. Northern gannets are a good sign. These kamikaze flyers locate their victims under the surface before dive bombing at 70 miles per hour. Seabirds gather around the gannets to finish off any leftovers. Instinct has paid off. As it wanders the coastline, this seal will cover more than 600 miles in three years before finally reaching Ramsey Island in Wales. It is separated from the mainland by a narrow, funnel-shaped isthmus where strong currents are created by the tides. They draw cold water and nutrients from the depths. 24 hours a day, they ensure a constant source of food for the hundreds of marine predators that gather in the pass. Among them are small, furtive whales called porpoises. This 130-pound speed freak battles the current to catch 10 pounds of fish a day. In the last few years, scientists have noticed some male grey seals taking a close interest in these coastal creatures. Though seals are at home in the current, they cannot match the speed of the porpoises. Any high-speed chase would end in failure. So they rely on a different technique, lying in ambush for their prey. But the low visibility prevents them from seeing their victims arrive. 
Luckily, their whiskers are more sensitive to vibrations created by movement in the water than in the air. They act like a multi-beam sensor, relaying information about position, direction of travel, and speed of the porpoises. So the gray seal lies in wait as the porpoises pass by, hoping to catch them by surprise. To no avail, the seal lacks experience. But here, and in other Atlantic bottlenecks, male seals kill a dozen or so porpoises each year. Female seals have never been witnessed attacking porpoises. It's believed that they concentrate on smaller prey. In her quest for food, one female seal left the island of Faré and made her way to Shetland. Curiously, females dive for longer periods, but to shallower depths than males. Six minutes compared to five, and 150 feet compared to 190. So females tend to hunt close to the coast. To the southwest of Shetland, Seals can be found fishing in the white sandy beaches on the island of St. Ninian. These sheltered bays conceal a hidden feast. The kings of camouflage are no match for the seal's whiskers. Flounders. And beware of seagulls looking for leftovers. Female seals start giving birth at the age of four, so they have to build up their fat reserves from a young age. In their search for new hunting grounds, gray seals, including these females, discover a new world. A strange place furnished with colored balls and snoring monsters surrounded by concrete adorned by seagulls. A changing ocean that requires all Atlantic predators to adjust. Even killer whales. As they traveled down the east coast of Scotland, the seals arrived in this strange world, a far cry from Faré. They notice that other gray seals are not perturbed by the presence of strange steel giants in the murky water. As 
they head up the River Tees, the vagabonds encounter a world of metal and concrete that rumbles and smokes with the rising tides and passing cars. They are not the only animals swimming upstream. As the tide rises, Atlantic salmon swim against the current in the hope of finding their spawning grounds. They were born in these waters and their extremely acute sense of smell leads them back to the River Tees. The seals hope to snack on these migrating swimmers. But in the open water, they remain out of reach. By chance, mankind's boundless appetite for concrete and metal will ultimately help them out. Upstream from the floats, the seals have discovered an insurmountable wall, a barrage. The current from the rising tide encourages the seals to converge at the concrete funnel. They are all waiting for the gates to open. The influx of fresh water brings the salmon to the surface and within easy reach of the seals. Notwithstanding this bounty, the seals eat less than 7% of the salmon trying to pass the barrage. As the tide rises, the sea overpowers the river's current, covering the gates. The salmon can then head upstream to their breeding areas beyond the barrage. As for the seals, and particularly this female, they can digest their meal and relax in a foam bath. A female gray seal eats an average of five and a half pounds of fish per day, while males eat six and a half pounds. The fatter the fish, the fewer they need. Salmon provide plenty of fat and nourishment, but they're not always easy to catch. As one female seal finds out, as she swims around Scotland, she discovers a range of strange cylindrical structures, a salmon farm. Ten cages, each 130 feet in diameter, encircling more than a million salmon. just out of reach of the seal. 
about 350 salmon farms are scattered around Scotland's coastline. These cages create miniature ecosystems that are several hundred feet around. Fish food, excrement, and parasites pass through the cages to the fish that live outside. Like pollock that are well within the reach of the seals. Fish farmers make little distinction between predators feasting on pollock outside the cages and seals stealing salmon. Farmed salmon remain the property of their owners who guard their fish jealously. Grey seals pay a high price for their curiosity. In Great Britain, seals can legally be killed if they pose a threat to farmed fish. In the Baltic Sea, off the coast of Sweden, fishermen are also in conflict with grey seals. At the beginning of the 21st century, they began laying nets in the path of coastal fish to funnel them towards an enclosed trap. Seals follow the fish in their wake. Surveillance cameras have caught them stealing salmon, cod and herring. are pulled in, all that remains are leftovers. The Baltic Sea suffers from overfishing and dwindling stocks, but inevitably, grey seals are, are the ideal scapegoats for this over-exploitation. The grey seal population has been severely impacted by accidental death in the nets and authorised culls. Since the start of the 20th century, Half the seals in the Baltic Sea have disappeared. Today, Faré's population, like all colonies in the North Atlantic, fluctuates, depending on food resources. On new predators and accidental deaths, several factors that explain the stagnation of their populations. Today, there are fewer grey seals in the world than elephants in Africa. But grouped together around the coast, they appear to be plentiful. Out at sea, in contact with industrial fishing boats, many seals disappear without a trace. Others survive, but display the scars. We can only speculate on why seals have taken to hunting unusual prey. But scientists suspect that the fishing industry is once again to blame. Overfishing forces seals to find alternative sources of food. To survive in this changing world, future generations of seals will need to adapt their movements and behavior. So seals that have come under fire in the north of Britain move south, many to Blakeney Point.
here, there are no killer whales, no traps, and no salmon farms. It's a new El Dorado, where seals are completely protected, on the same stretch of land where their populations were decimated during the 19th century. In 2001, 25 pups were born here. Today, more than 2,000 are born every year in what has become the largest reproductive colony in England. Proof that protection and a source of fish are enough for grey seals to prosper. It's a simple message for those that are prepared to listen.